Did you know that for thousands of years, comets have been perceived as harbingers or omens by ancient empires and civilizations and even world leaders throughout history? It has been noted that strange events and even deaths of famous leaders often followed or coincided with the appearance of comets. Why are we talking about this today? Because a famous comet by the name of Halley's Comet is making its appearance once again in our solar system. Is this yet another harbinger? Let's get after it. All right, what's up, everybody? This is End Time Headlines. I want to bring you a quick, short uh, video. We're going to update you on some stuff that is happening. Uh, this one is dealing with Luke 21 and Matthew 24. Both of these passages talks about signs in the sun, moon, and stars. These would be indicators of the coming of the Lord. And I thought I would bring you an article that I personally think is very interesting uh, and wanted to share that with you. Uh, as I've said at the beginning of this broadcast, the ancients taught that comets were seen as an omen or a harbinger of some remarkable event that would occur. For example, at the death of Julius Caesar, a comet was seen in the heavens for seven days during his death. Did you know that four years prior to the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD, Josephus, the historian, in his account wrote that a comet was observed by all that were there and present, and it was seen over the city for one full year prior to its destruction. Scientists have researched and discovered that this comet was the same comet centuries later that would be identified as Halley's Comet. This comet was named after the English astronomer who plotted its orbit in the 17th century. And we know now through certain technology that we have today that this comet orbits the sun every 75 to 79 years and was last seen in 1986. But however, again, through some historical research, it appears that this comet was the same comet that was seen five, four years, excuse me, four years prior to the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Also, this comet was also noted for passing through our solar system in 12 BC when Herod was expanding the temple platform in Jerusalem and reappeared again, 66 AD again, which is four years prior to the destruction of the temple. But let me take you a little further, more recent, uh, in history, this same comet was spotted in 1910, four years prior to the outbreak of World War I, and again swung through back around in 1988, which was four years prior to the Gulf War. Now, according to Forbes magazine, look at this article, the return of Halley's Comet begins soon. According to this report, Halley's Comet will again make its appearance in November of this year, of 2023. It will get as far as it ever does from the sun. So here we have this comet that has been noted by historians, astronomers, and those who done the research on this, that was spotted 12 BC when Herod was expanding the temple platform in Jerusalem. It swung back around, reappeared in 66 AD, four years prior to the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans. And then it swung back through in 1910, four years prior to World War I. And then in 1988, four years prior to the Gulf War. So remember, Jesus said there would be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. There would be great and fearful sights from heaven prior to the coming of the Son of Man. Could it be possible that the Lord is using the signs in the sun, moon, and stars and the constellations to get the attention of those who have discernment, of those who understand the times and seasons to prepare us for a war that may be on the horizon. Because again, it, there seems to be a pattern here that prior to a major war or conflict, 
this comet is seen in our solar system. Now I want to leave you with one last final interesting fact about this. Check this out in the article at Forbes or from Forbes magazine. This comet, Halley's Comet, is currently in the constellation Hydra. Now, why is that interesting? Because Hydra in Greek mythology, and then we're not promoting Greek mythology, but I'm just telling you the facts here. It, it represents a serpent or a snake. And by the way, you go into the Bible, and did you know that Satan is... Descript, he, the, there's a description of Satan in the Bible as the great red dragon. And the, the Greek word there, we think of a dragon as uh, the, a mythology, as a, a fire-breathing uh, dragon, as we know in all kinds of movies and, and depictions. But the Greek word there is actually dracon, where we get serpent. We know that Satan was depicted as a serpent in the garden. He spoke through a serpent when he deceived Adam and Eve and was cursed by God. And the curse was that on your belly, you shall dwell all the days of your life. And it's interesting, Josephus, since we mentioned him in this uh, podcast, Josephus actually spoke about this, this very incident, this story. And he talked about how there was a time when he claims that uh, serpents actually walked on two legs. And he even went as far as to say that animals actually spoke and communicated with humans before the fall of Adam. And even your science books, and I use quotation marks, will even tell you that snakes or serpents at one time had limbs, but according to them, they evolved over time to be legless. Now, that's if you believe evolution, but I believe that the reason why the serpents lost their ability to walk on legs is because of the curse that came from, from Lucifer's deception that he brought to Adam and Eve, and God specifically cursed the serpent who Satan spoke through in the garden. So again, this I believe this, this kind of stuff is intriguing to me. We wanted to get this information out to you. Again, we didn't want to spend a long time in this. We wanted to do more videos like this that are shorter so that you can get these out there, that you can share these with your friends, your family, and those uh, that you can inform the times and seasons which we're in. Again, don't forget to subscribe subscribe and download our free app available on Apple and Android devices. Hit yes to push notifications. You're going to be notified of every headline and every podcast when it is readily available. If this ministry is a source of information, blessing, and encouragement to you, don't forget to pray about becoming a monthly partner. You can do that two different ways. You can give electronically through the app or through the website in which in itself, or you can give by check or money order right there on the screen by making it out to end time headlines, PO box 1391. That's Monroe, Georgia, three, zero, six, five, five. God bless you guys. We will see you guys right back here in the next video. Thank you for listening to the end time headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.